It's literally the same thing as the Ad Motor um, M850 P7. Uh, it has a the Fang 750 watt motor in the back and Shimano gearing system. Um, I was a little skeptical about buying this one because it was um, a lot less expensive than uh, the other brands, but I figured, hey, why not? I'm on a budget, so let's pick out um, the bike that looks the coolest, has the best reviews, and is ultimately the least expensive. Um, I wanted something that was robust. I didn't want to get a folding bike. Initially, that's what I thought I wanted. Um, I eventually went with this guy. Um, I haven't seen too many reviews about this one. Um, about the Admotor M850 P7 or the F35 from BPM Imports. Um, so I figured I would be the first to make a review about it. Um, I'm not super into biking. Last time I rode a bike I was like 13 years old, but since I moved from Las Vegas to a small town in New Mexico where I could essentially walk to work, I wanted to uh, get a bike. It's about 3.5 miles. Uh, both ways, so seven mile round trip. And I wanted a bike that could, uh, you know, kind of be up to the task and uh, get me there pretty quickly. First of all, let's talk about how it comes. So it comes um, basically built for you. There's, you only have to put together the uh, front tire, handlebars, and a couple of the electronics up top, and I think the seat. Um, it wasn't very hard to put together. It was um, realistically, like a 25 to 35 minute job but again I'm not a bike expert so um, I don't think I put it together uh, too cleanly uh, with that being said about a week after using the bike I did bring it to a bike shop and he tuned it up for like 50 bucks and now it runs great so I suggest if you're gonna get this bike you could try putting it together I'm sure it'll be fine um, especially if you know a little bit about bikes but if you don't know anything about bikes um, I would say just get a professional to put it together um, that's your best bet um, anyway let's talk a little bit about the bike now okay so you have um, full suspension okay you have um, the, the rear suspension, front suspension. Um, I don't think the rear suspension is adjustable, but the front is. Um, seems pretty good. Um, the tires are four inch fat tires, 26 inch, four inch wide fat tires. And um, yeah, they're, they're pretty decent. I don't bump them up to the highest PSI, which I think is 20. Um, the lowest recommended is five. I think I'm in between like at 11 PSI right now. And I only ride on the road, so it's actually pretty smooth. I could probably increase it and uh, get maybe a little bit more speed or a little bit more uh, distance out of the battery, um, but it's it's good for now. Um, the battery is pretty decent. It lasts me about, I would say, 25 miles on a good day. Um, I go back and forth to work a few times a day because I come home and get lunch and let my dogs out. And it lasts all day, and I still have about I don't know, half a battery left. You do notice once the battery starts dropping past a certain point, um, you lose speed a little bit, which which is fine. And I'll talk a little bit about uh, what I did for the speed because uh, essentially this bike is capped at 40 kilometers per hour. Um, and when you're riding in miles per hour, it's, it kind of cuts you off. The motor will cut you off at about 25 miles per hour, 26 miles per hour. So um, to fix that, there is a, uh, tutorial online for this you essentially trick the bike into thinking that you're going slower than you actually are um, by changing the uh, setting and I'll show you in a second um, from kilometers uh, from miles per hour to kilometers per hour and then you change your wheel size to 16 inches instead of 26 inches so essentially the motor will not cut out and you can get up to speeds um, I got to like 34 miles per hour with pedaling without pedaling it could probably be stable on a flat ground on flat ground around 28 miles per hour um, and it's pretty accurate it does say kilometers per hour but it's roughly the same conversion uh, it's about was it a 1.6 conversion rate so if it says you're going, you know, 20 kilometers per hour, you're probably going like, you know, closer to 29 kilometers, I mean, miles per hour. So, yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty, um, it's pretty accurate, which, again, uh, 
I wanted to be able to go fast back and forth to work and uh, I could do my round trip commute to work in about 15 minutes, maybe a little less if I wanted to. So, so let's go through the bike a little. Shimano at seven speed. Um, feels pretty good. It does have a throttle. You can use a throttle the entire time. Has this cool little rear light. Let's see if I can turn it on. So if you hold down this button, you can turn it on. You have different assist levels. So if you press up here, you go to level two, three, four, five. Five's the highest. Um, and essentially that will bring you all the way up. Click on this. You can see that the rear, you can see that very well. But it does illuminate. It's kind of cool for safety. Let's see. The battery is detachable. Well, you can twist this all the way to off. That way you can take it into charge. I usually leave the bike outside covered. I take this off to charge inside. Just like that. Okay. It does have a little handle for you to carry it, which is nice. And then to lock it, you just put the key back in. It does come with two keys. I don't know why. I mean, maybe in case you lose one. Now, you can change the menu functionality by holding down two up and down buttons. Now by default you want to have it set to your 26 inch wheels, but I have it set to 16. That's to get more power out of the motor while you're riding. Okay, 40 kilometers per hour you can actually drop it so you're not going as fast, but 40 is the max on this. Um, these are your illuminations, so you can actually make it brighter. You can make this thing brighter, which you can do. And then you have kilometers per hour. It's one of your settings, so. Pull down the menu and you're back to default. So I've ridden uh, 73 kilometers so far. Um, and if you wanted to see that, you can do a trip, tripometer or odometer. Okay, you can change what you want to see. So if you're in kilometers, you can see miles per hour. And that's 45 miles I've ridden total so far. But since I like the kilometers per hour because then I don't get the cutoff, I'm gonna leave it in kilometers per hour. So, now you do have a throttle on here. It's right next to your um, shifter. And you can throttle this all the way down and I'll show you how fast this thing does go with the throttle. So with the throttle, <laughs> right around 30 miles per hour. 29.6 kilometers per hour but in, it goes um, a lot faster than that because it is set to 16 inch wheels. So this thing does have a front headlight. Unfortunately, it is detached from your um, control buttons on the uh, handlebars, but it's as easy as clicking the button on the light and it will illuminate. And it's not bad. It does take uh, standard batteries. Um, pretty simplistic. I don't ride too much at night, so it's not really an issue, but it is nice to have. So that and the uh, illuminating tail light is very nice. You also get a cute little bell, uh, which you're supposed to have on your bike. You're supposed to have a, uh, lights and a bell. That's nice for, you know, when you're riding on the sidewalk and you have to pass some pedestrians and they know you're there. So it's pretty nice. It's pretty cool. Oh yeah, and this seat hurts your ass uh, like a mofo. So if, uh, if you're gonna get this bike, I would highly recommend getting a different seat because this seat uh, definitely tears you up. Hi, Trixie!
So let's talk a little bit about some of the issues I have with this bike. Um, my dog is playing fetch with my girlfriend and he wants to come over here. He's looking at me like, I'm gonna come see my dad. I'm coming over. He doesn't listen. He doesn't listen. He doesn't listen. He doesn't listen. All right, go get mama. Go get mama, go. Silly dog. Okay, so let's talk about some of the issues I have with this bike. One of them is the kickstand. So the kickstand's cool, looks kind of robust. The positioning of it is terrible. If this thing is not set all the way up when you kick it up to ride, your pedal will scrape on that kickstand. Um, I brought it into the bike shop. I tried to loosen it, push it in, and it's like it has to be set just right. So you have to like kick it in perfectly for it to uh, not scrape. So that is like one of the most annoying things. Um, what I essentially will probably end up doing is uh, just filing it down since it's plastic and just making this edge right here, which you can kind of see where it was scraping. Let's see if I get close enough. It's right there, just where it scrapes when it's in the up position. It'll scrape right on the inside of the pedal here, so it's kind of frustrating. So that's kind of annoying. Um, so the controller box is in here, and I just wanted to see if I could mess with the uh, kickstand. And the issue is, with the controller box, um, the plate that's screwed on, um, a lot of the screws on there are stripped. And it is really annoying to take it off. And uh, once you get it off and you try to put those screws back on, um, they just spin. There's like three screws that will uh, catch and will tighten, and then the three others just hang there and it's pretty frustrating um, that that's like that because now I'm afraid water will get into it um, because I don't think it's tight enough on here. It just feels like there's a little bit of a gap. So that's kind of annoying. Um, I wish it wasn't like that, but then again, um, I did ride through some rain and I haven't had any issues, so um, yeah. I mean, if you plan on riding through rain, maybe this isn't the bike for you, but if you're just going back and forth to work and maybe you have a car that you're gonna ride or drive when it does rain, you'll be fine. I usually use this when it's dry and it's nice out. I don't care about how cold it is, it's just, you know, whatever. What else? Um, let's talk a little bit about the brakes. So the brakes aren't the highest quality brakes. They are disc brakes and they are okay. Um, I would say if you're gonna get this bike, um, I highly recommend upgrading to probably some, you know, better hydraulic brakes or something, which I plan on doing. Um, I had the guy at the bike shop tweak the brakes so uh, it works pretty well, but again, uh, they screech like a mofo. Um, don't know how to like fix that, I don't know if you can. And uh, they don't seem as tight as they possibly can be, and the guy at the, uh, shop said he did everything he could but still it still breaks pretty well it's not like you're gonna die on it um, it's just not 100% the best it could be so upgrading the brakes would be highly recommended to me um, what else okay so the other thing too is just so you know if you don't use that hack if you don't use that hack where you change the wheel size to 16 inches and you change it to kilometers per hour, the motor does cut out. Um, the motor cuts out at around, like I said, 25 miles per hour or so. Um, if you do the hack, you're going to get up to like 30 or 32 miles per hour. The issue with that, obviously, is you're going to have way less battery um, and you're not going to nearly go as far. Um, as you would if you had it set the other way. If you use the pedal assist mode, which there are five modes, um, I assume if you use like level, between level one through three, you could probably get away with getting, you'll probably get roughly 30 miles for a full charge on the battery. Um, and the battery is a, an 11 amp hour, uh, 48 volt battery. And uh, it's, it's okay, it's, it's fine for, for what it is, it's for, for what I need it for, it's fine. If you needed a bigger battery, there are no options for it. Um, but again, this is like one of the least expensive e-bikes that has uh, all the features that I wanted on it. Um, 
yeah, so if you if you modify the settings to where you want to go as fast as possible um, and have a lot of fun with the bike, uh, you might be getting away with like 20 miles, uh, maybe 25 miles on a charge, and that's not just using throttle. I assume if you just use the throttle on the handlebars, um, you might only get like 18 miles or so uh, on a full charge, maybe a little less. Um, other than that, my uh, recommendation is that it's a decent bike, um, seems pretty reliable. Um, it is very cool looking, I will say that. It definitely has a unique style. Um, people definitely know it's an e-bike when you ride by them, um, especially when you're riding past like road bikes. Um, the thing is huge, so keep that in mind. If you're going to transport it, it just barely fits in my uh, Mazda CX-5. I have to bring the seat in the front all the way forward and drop all the seats in the back and it will fit in there decently. Um, but it's pretty tight, so just remember it's a pretty big bike. Um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I would say go for it if you're interested in it. Um, if not, uh, I've been looking at the Juggernaut Ultra full suspension bike, which I might get next year, or depending if this bike craps out on me. Um, I am enjoying. I am enjoying riding this bike. Um, it's a lot of fun. So yeah. And uh, yeah, see you guys uh, next time.